Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about the systemic associations of uveitis. So if you remember from my previous video that I posted about uveitis, uveitis can have several potential underlying systemic causes. That's what we'll be talking about today. So please stay tuned to learn more about this. of considering the underlying causes that may potentially be responsible for a patient having an iritis or uveitis attack, the body tends to be broken down into systems. So that's the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, the gastrointestinal system, etc. So that's the order in which I'll be approaching this discussion. In terms of the cardiovascular system, the symptoms that patients typically can experience if there is a dysfunction with this system are chest pain, palpitations, shortness of breath, secondary to fluid on the lungs as it were, um, and those tend to be the common ones. Causes for this can vary from things such as TB, lupus, ankylosing spondylitis, Bechet's disease, sarcoidosis, and even syphilis. If we then go on to talk about the respiratory system, the symptoms um, under this particular aspect include a cough, which can be caused by TB, it can be caused by sarcoidosis. Patients may also find that they notice blood in their sputum. This is called hemoptysis. This could be attributable to potentially things such as, again, TB, sarcoidosis, lupus. And again, chest pain and shortness of breath, considering the respiratory system, can be potentially due to sarcoidosis, TB, and lupus. The purpose of this video and these little clues and tips is not designed to be an exhaustive list, it's designed to provide potential inclinations and light bulb moments for what potentially may be the cause of some of these uveitis, especially if they have the presence of such symptoms. But as you can see, it's very important to clearly ascertain what the patient's symptoms actually are because the actual symptom itself could be caused by a variety of different conditions. In terms of the gastrointestinal system, so basically your gut, the main symptoms in this are blood in your stools, diarrhea, and also when considering the liver, the presence of jaundice. The three more commoner conditions that we worry about um, if such symptoms are present in the context of potentially a uveitis are inflammatory bowel disease, Bechet's disease and HIV. In terms of problems with your waterworks or the genital urinary system, if there is the presence of discharge or pain upon passing water, this could mean the potential likelihood of a infection, TB or condition called Reiter syndrome. Blood in your urine could potentially mean the presence of TB, potential kidney problems or potential what we call vasculitis issues, such as Wegener's. The presence of genital and or mouth ulcers can be very indicative or suggestive of a Bechet's type picture. Moving on to the ear, nose and throat, a combination of sinus problems, recurrent nosebleeds and a painful eye can all point towards a Wegener's granulomatous picture. And problems with deafness and uveitis can potentially indicate a VKH type syndrome. Moving on to joints then, in terms of children, um, we tend to worry about juvenile idiopathic arthritis, whereas in adults, we tend to worry more about a rheumatoid arthritis or a psoriatic arthritis type picture. In addition to this, conditions such as sarcoid and lupus can also present with joint pain and stiffness in addition to a painful red uveitic eye. The classic hallmark presentation of an ankylosing spondylitis tends to be young males who present with a painful red eye as well as lower back pain which has been ongoing for weeks or months. 
In terms of the skin then and uveitis, the common presentations tend to be those of rashes and when a rash is present and uveitis is present then one must consider the potential underlying association or cause being things such as lupus, things such as VKH syndrome, also not forgetting psoriasis and Lyme disease. In terms of the central nervous system then, the symptoms under this system are varied and vast. These include but are not limited to headaches, weakness, numbness and tingling. The more commoner conditions that can cause these specific problems include MS, sarcoidosis, Bechet's, VKH, toxoplasmosis and even lymphomas. In terms of lymphomas, one should also ask about things such as swollen glands, fevers and night sweats. But this is where it's important to exercise clinical judgment as a practitioner and this is why it's important to present to your eye care professional as a patient because as well as lymphomas potentially causing swollen glands, fevers and night sweats, juvenile idiopathic arthritis can also present or have such features as part of the condition. Thank you so much for watching this particular video about the potential underlying systemic causes of uveitis. In terms of uveitis, if you do watch my previous video on this, you will remember the vast majority of uveitis tends to be idiopathic, i.e. we do not know why the actual problem occurs. But in certain cases, there may be an underlying systemic association, and that's what we've spoken about today. You'll also remember, if you watched the video and listened intently, the variety of symptoms that I mentioned can be attributable to a wide variety of potential underlying causes. This is why it's important not to self-diagnose and this is why it's important to present to your eye care professional for a thorough workup, a thorough history and therefore the correct diagnosis so that the underlying systemic cause of your uveitis, should you have one, can be treated appropriately. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do click the like button, the subscribe button and click the bell icon if you found it to be useful. See you next time.